Yo, what's going on there guys? I got a brand new video coming at you guys today. It's actually gonna be a brand new series that I've been working on my channel. I started it uh, pretty much yesterday. It was an idea that uh, someone brought to me and I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. It's gonna be you guys sending in your dual replay specifically from Dueling Books since it's the easiest platform for me to work with. And I can just commentate over you guys' duels and you know just use it as an opportunity to talk about anything I want, whether it be the format, whether it be the meta and kind of mix it in talking about the duels and at the same time you guys get some cool entertainment in. Uh, these are all fan submitted duels. You guys posted them in my community post. I made a post yesterday that I wanted to get some replays done and you guys sent me a bunch of different duels. I only picked a small handful of them. Some of them I'm gonna fast forward through some of them. Um, it will be kind of like this one where it'll just be at a standard pace. Uh, the first duel we have here actually features a Dark Lord deck, which is pretty cool. Um, I think Dark Lords are a combo-based deck that has kind of been thrown off to the wayside and just cast aside in general, mostly because um, I wouldn't say it underperforms, but honestly, just everything else is better right now. Uh, in general, I mean, if you really think about all the combo-based decks in the meta right now, the best combo-based decks are pretty much the, the FTK slash OTK-based decks, whether they extra link you, whether they get rid of your hand with Gumblar, whether they make an absolutely unbreakable board and Gumblar you, or whether they simply just uh, just burn you with the danger FTK cannon soldier type stuff. Like it, you really can't get at a much higher ceiling than that because the consistency is high, the power is high, and of course the the just the, the the speed of those decks is extremely high. And um, it's it's really much you know it's very difficult to surpass that kind of stuff. Like you could have a really cool Dark Lord deck like this, but at the end of the day, it's not going to matter when you compare it to something that has probably the same, if not a greater consistency and greater power but can also just kill you turn one. They don't have to wait for you to respond. They don't have to make that unbreakable board where they can just kill you. They can burn you. They can get rid of your whole hand where you don't even have an opportunity to play. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I think this is a great option to kind of just show you guys some other fun decks that you guys can play here. And Dark Lords, I believe Ixchel recently got reprinted not too long ago. This is predominantly a fairy-based deck, and there's a lot of cool cards you could play in this deck. Honestly, I've, I've noticed just kind of watching some of these replays uh, you see that they can establish a lot of big monsters. Superbia is great for basically uh, putting back free monsters. There's tons of powerful spells, whether you're looking at like Dark Lord Contact or, or Banishment. And of course he drew Soul Charge, which was just insane uh, in this situation. But I noticed that this deck seems to be quite reliant on getting out Raiden and, and just in general uh, the Force. You can kind of dig through your engine, drawing big pieces like Raiden, Charge of, uh, Charge of the Light Brigade, Reasoning. Cards like that that allow you to put a lot of your cards in Grave is great because... It allows you to, you know, to get to plays like this where you can establish a FA Dawn Dragster to have a free negation. In this case, he has a Dark Lord Rebellion face down along with an Ixchel and Am uh, Dusk on the field, which essentially just allows him to have a couple free pops, uh, a free negation, and his monsters are relatively big. And in this case, he also happens to have a Called by the Grave. His opponent didn't have any hand traps. Um, but this is something that can interact with the opponent during, you know, their turn uh, with their graveyard if they're trying to do some crazy combo. And this is still a really respectable board. I mean, it's probably not the best board he's made, but from what I've seen, like he did send me a, f a few different replays. And at the end of the day, they, they all seemed uh, quite good, like in terms of their boards. Like they weren't the, the strongest boards because they don't immediately kill you. They're a little bit more reactive and passive in that regard, but they're still quite powerful. And, and I think it's really respectable um, to see decks like this. I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good fan of uh, the fairy archetype in general. I feel it doesn't definitely, I feel it just definitely doesn't get enough love um, overall, and I think there's a lot of powerful cards. I mean, there's so many free pluses that you can run in this deck. Obviously, it runs stuff like Desires and Goods for consistency, but we're going to fast forward through a little bit here. Uh, he seems to be playing against a Danger deck. Now, it's probably the Danger FTK, I would imagine, but um, it's playing Beige, which isn't really ideal. So I don't know if it's like just Dark Lord, uh, Dark Lord Dangers or something of the sort, or maybe he's just playing Beige because for whatever other random reason, but... Uh, he seems to be breaking the board apart here with Bigfoot being able to pop the Dawn Dragster. Um, and, you know, his opponent's just going to town. Of course, Danger's a really powerful engine. Um, and he has the one of card destruction, and which he can't activate. Keep that in mind, even if the opponent doesn't have any cards in hand. As long as one player has cards in hand, you are able to play card destruction. And you can kind of see him picking apart the board here. Um, or trying to, and then, you know, the Dark Lord Rebellion comes down, gets rid of the Bigfoot, and he has the Amdusk, which is really cool. Any of these guys, you basically can activate your Dark Lord uh, spells and traps in the graveyard by copying their effects without even bothering to use the cost. And that's exactly what he does here. He pays the 1,000 life points, copies the Banishment, um, and eventually gets into Morningstar, which is a really big boss monster. 
this is one of the coolest monsters, I think, in the entire deck. I'm, I'm just going to pause play real quick right here so you guys can read what Morningstar does. It, basically, you can't special summon it, which is a little bit of an issue. It's almost kind of like the Metaltron of the deck, if you kind of compare it to, to the true Dracos. Um, but when he, when, he gets, uh, when he gets Tribute Summon, you're able to special summon Dark Lord Monster from your hand or deck up to the number of effect monsters your opponent controls, um, which is insane. If your opponent just has any monsters out on the field, it's just free. But then on top of that, you can send uh, cards from the top of your deck to the grave to basically excavate them, and then equal to the number of Dark Lord Monsters already on the field, so you can use this effect after, and it gives you some, uh, you know, 500 life point boost for each Dark Lord card sent by its effect, and that's that's pretty good. And it's a 3K beater, which is huge. I think Morning Star is um, probably a one of for the deck. I mean, you can search it, um, but at this point, he just has a slew of monsters out on the field. It doesn't really seem like the opponent's going to be able to do much. He's just going to mill a bunch of cards here for Morning Star's effect. Um, get a bunch of stuff off, and they seem to be going to game two really quick. So we're kind of just going to turbo through it here at this point. Uh, you guys can just enjoy the rest of this specific duel. I'll have a couple more duels. I might not do all of them. But, uh, yeah, he, he starts off with Charter of the Light Brigade. Very strong opening. And this deck runs tons of draw power. I mean, allures, desires, a lot of consistency. And, uh, I mean, if we if we end up seeing, like, the combo type stuff right now getting hit... Uh, over the course of uh, maybe the next format or so. Maybe this could be a deck that, that's like a sleeper deck. I think this deck is is one of those decks that, that as you know, just just as a result of being a combo-based deck, can very easily become a, a meta deck once again with the release of one or two cards. Um, and, and that's huge. I mean, that's how a lot of decks are in Yu-Gi-Oh! It really just takes one or two cards to break a lot of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, if, if you really look at it, like, the, the danger stuff really complements Firewall Dragon really well, but then when you mix that with the Dark Lords and, of course, already existing cards like Cannon Soldier, that, that stuff, it really took only a couple cards, um, in the, in the form of the dangers to kind of manifest that FTK strategy, which, of course, everyone is hoping gets hit to some capacity, um, my personal pick is, of course, Firewall, like everyone else. And if they don't hit it, um, it's going to be really, really unfortunate. But um, we'll see. Um, anyway, in terms of the meta, I guess just some other random banter I kind of want to highlight is uh, YCS Pasadena is coming up. It's it's coming up really shortly next weekend. And uh, Pasadena, as much, as excited as I was for it, I know it's in my state of California. It's I mean, I'm in Northern California, like very Northern California. But... Um, I'm probably not going to be attending. I, I recently, some of you guys know, um, I, I shared this info with some of my close friends, is that I unfortunately broke a tooth last week and I had to, turns out they couldn't just give me a filling on it because it was a cusp. And as a result of that, I had to get a crown and it's like $600-ish, maybe more. And that's like out of pocket, which is really insane. I mean, Dental stuff, medical stuff. Any have any time you do deal with that kind of stuff, it, it's always just really expensive. And um, um, before I can see the story, just we we see Ravenous Tarantula coming down here as a random um, rank ten monster. I love this. I love the spiders. But we'll quickly go on to our next duel here. This is uh, I believe either a this no this is a, I think this is another uh, Dark Lord duel. Um, we'll see this. This is against a different deck, so I'm not sure. Uh, I think this is Dark Lords versus Gokies. So. Uh, we'll fast forward a little bit through it. You guys can see what this player is able to do against Dark Lords. He seems to be able to go first in this situation, but uh, nonetheless. Um, anyways, I, ha I had to get a crown. It's like $600 out of pocket, and like I just have so much personal stuff going on, and that was really like the last straw at this point. I'm like, you know, I really wanted to go, but the format's really kind of garbage. If I go, it's really just going to be to see my friends and go a couple days early and just hang out, maybe go to, like, uh, to Studio City and just kind of enjoy the weekend. Um, and I know if I try and do that and then I go, I'm going to be, fear, you know, aggravated probably at the FTKs and all the degenerate stuff going on in this format. And it's just, it's, it's not fun. I don't want my, my quote unquote vacation going to Pasadena to be stained by, um, a, a very lackluster event, so to speak. So, um, it sucks that they didn't, you know, include some new emergency ban list or emergency changes to the list after the last two YCSs, I believe London and, um, in the Canada one, whatever the Canada one was, I think it was Toronto or Niagara, actually Niagara Falls, excuse me. Uh, but we see a very quick duel here uh, in game one. It seems the player is playing Red Reboot in his main, and he's playing Gokies. It's like a, he also had a random, I think, uh, Spiral Monster in his deck. It's just a really awkward deck playing Super Quantums. Just really, really weird. And here, I think the reason I fast forwarded through this here is because he's just going to do his all his standard Goki U Link stuff, I believe. Um, and luckily, uh, Ego Mens or Ego Mez here opens up with uh, Ross Fear Mode, and he's probably going to get Gumblard. 
he's going to hope that that raw sphere mode doesn't get hit uh, on the second round of discards. Um, and really, like, for all intents and purposes, like, anytime you're facing this deck, like, it's no different than getting FTK'd if you're starting with no cards. Like, you guys will see that in this second duel right here um, that, that he is able to uh, make a crazy, crazy comeback. Oh, spoiler alert. Um, but it, it's one of those things where it's, like, just purely luck-based above all else. It's not like it was a crazy skill-based comeback. It was just... His opponent had everything, but he just happened to have the perfect outs, and he didn't get Gumballard on the correct cards. So, um, we see here the, the, the standard U-Link board. We see the Gumballard coming down. He discards a couple cards, and um, he just has to hope that a, the opponent, when he brings back the Link Karibo here, uh, doesn't hit the correct cards, of course. So, um, yeah. Actually, I believe it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he ends up raw sphere moding him. He has the sphere mode for it, gets rid of the Trigate. Uh, a mermaid and something else so he can play that Iblis shutting him down but he happens to draw into a morning star uh or get getting into the morning star in contact very quickly um and he realizes here that you know his opponent doesn't have much of an extra deck. he has one card in his extra deck and he probably can't kill him um so he deals him a lot of damage and as long as he gets one turn he can pretty much just make a comeback with morning star because if you look at his grave um he has a few plays that he can do here but uh, he just needs to resolve that contact, and uh, he's Gucci for the most part. And he top decks a Monster Reborn, which I believe was he said was one of his only two outs in this situation, uh, other than Reasoning. And uh, he top decks Reborn with Contact and Morningstar, and he just establishes a huge duel. Like he's he can go Superbia, goes Lancelot, and the opponent just can't do anything. So that was an ab absurd comeback, a really rare comeback, I would say. Um. That's usually not going to happen with most decks in most situations. But he was able to come back against the full Goki U-Link, the absolute nuts. Um, <laughs> I mean, Gumblar is uh, absurd. I think this card just needs to be banned uh, by far. Like, this is... Gumblar is no different than anything else. Like, discarding... Uh, your opponent discarding the same number of cards first and then having the second effect where uh, you can also make them discard is just... It's crazy. And they have, like, free burn damage potentially if uh, if they have less cards in their hand. Like... Oh my, my Gumblar is just ridiculous. But straying a little bit away from uh, from this deck right here, from uh, Dark Lords, we're going to quickly jump into a fun duel. And this is actually going to be a Karibo OTK deck. Um, it's actually going to be the Saryuja uh, Karibo Law of the Normal deck, where it basically is also kind of link dedicated Karibo strategies, trying to get out Saryuja. And you guys can see this card right here. Uh, right here, right here. Uh, my friend Rob did a deck profile at the last YCS I went to for me. You guys can check it out uh, Check it out on my channel. I'll see if I can link it down below in the description. This card's really cool. Uh, you can actually only activate it if there's five level, uh, five face up, level two or low, lower normal monsters on your side of the field. And both players discard their entire hands and destroy car all cards on their field except those monsters. So it's pretty crazy. It's just another combo based deck. The idea of this deck is more or less kind of gumblaring you without gumblaring you. You just try and get rid of all your opponent's resources turn one. It's a little bit of a glass cannon because you have to run cards like Hero Kid and you can draw multiple militias and draw a bunch of weird stuff, but it's a Karibo deck. And I'm going to fast forward through it. You guys know all the standard Armageddon plays here. They get a sold and eventually you just try to go into Saryuja as quickly as possible to dig for all your stuff after you go Hero Kid, which you summon off of a sold. And Hero Kid is really good. The only downside is when you draw multiples of it, because you can only summon them from your deck when it gets special summoned. But uh, at this point, he's going Saryuja, he's putting all his stuff back, and uh, he's going to multiply Karibo <laughs> to get out all these monsters, and then he's going to easily Law of the Normal to get rid of absolutely everything his opponent has, make a bunch of Link monsters with the tokens that he gets to keep, and his opponent is down to one card that he's going to draw for turn. So it's very, very simple. <laughs> it's pretty absurd if you really think about it. But this format is kind of crazy. I think for Pasadena, we're probably going to see another combo-based deck win. I, I, even with representation of, you know, Strikers and a lot of Rogue decks and just a lot of other, like, weaker tier top meta decks uh, being represented or more represented than some of the combo-based decks probably. I w because of probably just price and just uh, people not wanting to play those decks. Um, I would still imagine that a combo deck is just going to win because most of the time combo decks just have a significant advantage against the slower control based decks and a lot of the quote unquote fair decks. Um, you know, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly how one can balance that dichotomy of having both combo based decks and control based decks when 
we're really, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't a block format type of game. It's it's a game where you can play all the cards from the beginning of the game, excluding cards that are on the list or either forbidden um, at the competitive level, of course. And, and there's only minor restrictions. Of course, some cards just get power crept and they're just never uh, really seen again. And of course, some cards come back in the same light. But unlike block formats, it's very difficult to balance Yu-Gi-Oh! in my opinion at any given point simply because we're not a block format. Um, it's hard to keep into account every single possible card that's in the game and comparing that to also all the cards that are going to come out or are being produced. It's just impossible to take everything into account um, because it's very unlikely that one person or a group of people are producing all the cards and know all the cards. Like It's just... It's human error, and, and that's why we see a lot of problematic cards like Firewall Dragon and a lot of things like that fly under the radar for so long. And in the case of Firewall Dragon, as I mentioned earlier, because it's a protagonist card and everyone knows it, it's very difficult to have a card that's so marketable and so integral to the casual players and casual fans and uh, fans of the show and, and just new players in general that draw, has that draw for those players to get into the game in some cases. Um, you know, things like that can just fly under the radar and it makes it difficult to deal with them. Um, of course, there's plenty of other cards that have just n naturally flown under the radar, not because they're, you know, show related or anything of the sort. I mean, if you look at cards like Masterpiece, that was a very poorly designed card. Um, Towers, just any kind of like broken, inherently broken cards and monsters and spells and traps in general that, that are just so, so problematic. And um, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see how Konami decides to tackle this next list. But this Karibo duel is pretty absurd, you guys can... I did fast forward through a little bit, just because it's really just a Link-based deck, but it features Karibo. Um, I guess I can show you guys the last two duels here. These are non karibo duels. This is actually going to be a Draco-invoked uh, matchup here. You guys are going to see them... Uh, we're going to turbo through them. It's two duels. The last two duels are Dracos. And you're going to see just how these decks... Like, There's a lot of innovation. Despite this format being kind of absurd, there's a lot of innovation. It's Fur Hire versus... Uh, this Draco Invoked variant, and he has uh, a lot of plays going for him. He actually plays Drythe, which is really interesting. It protects all the other Draco cards that you have on the field uh, from being destroyed, except itself by your opponent's card effects. So it's really cool. Um, and what's cool about this is the opponent goes Scapegoat that he baited out, but now he can so easily just Purgatrio. And <laughs> Purgatrio, if you guys are familiar with this, this is the Invoke monster that not only pierces, but can attack all the monsters your opponent controls once each. And it gains 200 attack for all the opponents, uh, each of the cards that your opponent has on the field. So this thing is huge. This thing is, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, it's gaining 1,200 attack, so it's at 3,500. And it pierces all the tokens. Or excuse me, it's at 4,500, I guess, apparently. My mistake. It is at uh, 500 or uh, 4,500, I think. I don't, I don't know why, because it's 200 attack for each uh, card your opponent controls. But then it loses attack, of course, for all this, so... Nonetheless, regardless of what it's at, even if it was at 2,000, it just pierces all the tokens. It's uh, it's insane. It just pierces everything. Like, And he was able to bring out Metaltron. Now, of course, the Metaltron, it's it's not like a real, real Metaltron here because it's not doing anything. But uh, Metaltron is one of my favorite boss monsters. It's, it's like so unfair when you get it out, but at the same time, it's so fair because it doesn't proactively do anything. It's just completely unaffected. But when your opponent deals with it, they, you know, you can easily get out, you know, something like, uh, like any of the extra deck monsters, Exterio, Last Warrior from Another Planet, just any of the other stuff. And uh, I think that was kind of hilarious that he was able to pierce through his opponent's scapegoats. His opponent was at 8,000, he was at 8,000, and he just very easily purgatrioed him. And oh, hopefully this next duel, I believe this next duel, we're going to see something quite similar. Except it's not going to be scapegoat, I think it's just going to be a pure OTK. Now I'm going to slow things down here a little bit. I'm not going to fast forward through this duel at this point because this is the last duel I have for the day for you guys here today. Um, I thank you once again for submitting these. If you guys want to post your dueling book replays, just post the links down below in the comment section of this video or whenever I make a community post. And uh, just give me a couple sentences of why you think it's a good duel to feature, if it's a fun duel, and you know what decks are included. And maybe it's like a one in a million situation or something just very unique or maybe something that, you know, you think is flying under the radar that people should know about that has that consistency and you just want to show off in general. Um, so this is your guys' chance to shine. You guys get a little bit of notoriety. And at the same time, it's just, uh, it's fun. It gives me an opportunity to talk and do this little commentary series. I think you guys will enjoy it very heavily. Uh, if it goes well, I'm not predominantly a commentary channel, unfortunately. <laughs> I feel those channels definitely uh, have a greater degree of freedom when it comes to YouTube, of course, especially in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. 
simply because they can really talk about anything, especially like nostalgic based stuff and casual stuff and just get tons of views because of it. Um, maybe I'll start doing that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll use this series as kind of my opportunity to kind of do that. Um, unfortunately, my channel, just like many other channels out there, is stagnated and plagued by being an old channel, uh, getting low amounts of views, and as a result, YouTube doesn't promote it, which also handicaps my views and sub rate. So um, it really sucks, but at this point, I'm kind of just accepting of it. Uh, you know, if it goes well, it, well, it goes well. If not, it doesn't. I'm not, I'm just going to put in as minimal effort as possible into what I think is sufficient content for you guys to enjoy. And uh, hopefully it'll it'll get me there one day. I mean, I'm probably going to be focusing a little bit more in the near future on my second channel because I haven't really been able to do too much with it uh, recently just because I've been busy and I had a Halloween video that I was going to do a pumpkin carving one, but I, I went to Vegas with my family and I didn't have an opportunity to edit it. So I'm probably going to edit it this week and post it. At the very least, it'll still be up before Thanksgiving and, you know, it's still pumpkins, Thanksgiving and pumpkins and Halloween kind of all go together, which is kind of cool. But uh, if you guys want to post that stuff, do it down below. He's going to book of the law here most likely for game uh, into Elysium, which is pretty insane. But uh, yeah, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe for more videos from me. I'd very much appreciate it. Links down below. I'm probably going to be closing my Patreon very soon just because uh, not many people do it. Um, I've been saying that for a while. But uh, I gotta, I'm going to try one more shot at producing some merch, some T-Wiz, official T-Wiz shirts. You guys can buy them in hoodies. Uh, hopefully I'll have them up in the next week or so. You guys can check those out. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all I really have for you guys. If you guys uh, enjoy it, links down below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as I mentioned. That has been uh, Fan Friday's uh, Dual Commentaries featuring you guys' duels and you guys' decks and you guys' tech picks, um, me commenting over them. I will probably continue to do this if this takes off and it does well. Maybe you guys have a better um, title for this series, but you guys can let me know. That's it. Take care, guys. That has been uh, my video for the day. I'll see you guys probably in the next couple days with another new video. And uh, yeah, Time Wizard is signing off. Take care, guys.